Well, last time, Bowwinkle had tossed Rocky high into the air in a desperate attempt to intercept the misguided missile which was carrying, of all people, fearless leader himself. But the evil-minded villain thought Rocky was an American anti-missile missile and so began to assemble his secret weapon, an anti-anti-missile missile missile. Let's see. Put tab C in slot E, bend flap G. Donovetta, this is the last secret weapon I ever got out of a cereal box. But the plucky squirrel, unaware of his danger, caught up with a speeding satellite and tried to slow it down. Boys! That is our fearless leader up there. You were expecting Werner von Braun? Oh, I hope he gets down all right. Me too, because if he doesn't get down, I'll be the fearless leader and I... Oh, boy! Boris, where are you going? I got to stop that squirrel. He's ruining my career. And Boris, anxious for promotion, dashed out of the house. If I can just keep fearless leader orbiting from now on, I get to wear monocle. High above, Rocky was pushing against the nose cone, trying to slow it down, but to no avail. And inside, fearless leader had finished assembling his anti-anti-missile-missile-missile and was aiming it directly at the unwitting squirrel. Fortunately, at that moment, Rocky happened to spot an old lady far below him who was trying to cross the street. Of course, for a real live TV hero, helping old ladies across the street comes before anything else in the world. So Rocky left his post just as Phyllis Leader pulled the trigger. Of course, he missed. But the recoil was enough to stop the forward motion of the satellite. And can any of you guess what that meant? Any Pottsylvanian schoolchild could tell you. When the progressive inertial momentum of an orbiting vehicle is diminished, the gravitational declination increases as pi times the quantity V over H. Which means? I fall down. And indeed, the missile dropped like a stone. Meanwhile, Rocky had just finished helping the old lady across the street. Is this where you want to go, ma'am? You, sir. I mean, yes, indeed, you do the deedy, little fellow. You sure got a deep voice for an old lady. I know. I've been feeling low for days. Oh, I'm sorry. You sure this is where you want to go? Believe me, I'm in exactly the right spot. And he was. <laughs> Hokey smoke! We lose more old ladies that way. But to Rocky's surprise, when the door of the wrecked satellite opened, who should come out but Devil Dan Hatful, followed closely by a sinister figure wearing a monocle. You know, I don't think that Devil Dan is ever going to stop feuding. Maybe we ought to go see the head of the other family. You mean Felonius Floyd? Yeah, maybe he'll stop the feud. Meanwhile, inside Devil Dan's shack... So, you were trying to get rid of me, eh, Badenov? Who, me, dear old boss man? Stop drooling on my insteps, bad enough. Me trying to get rid of you, dear old chiefy boy? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of such a thing. Then take off that monocle. <laughs> now that I have arrived, we proceed with part two of my plan. You have Moose and Squirrel here? Of course, fearless leader. Where? Right here. Uh, g- 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 Ooh, they were here a second ago. Boris, darling, there they go. Quick, bring them back here, Badenov, dead or alive. I got a choice. And so it was that as our heroes were hurrying for the cabin of Felonius Floy, they suddenly heard an ominous sound. <laughs> Bullwinkle, those are bloodhounds. They picked up your scent. You know what that means? It means I got a hole in my pocket. And the great dogs came nearer and nearer, followed by Boris Badenov, who was loaded for bear. Or moose, as the case may be. Be sure to be with us next time for Dollars and Cents. Or putting on the dog. <laughs>